So you're going to buy a new NVIDIA graphics card. Good for you. The only question is, which series should you be looking at? The RTX or the GTX? NVIDIA is about as consistent as Microsoft when it comes to numbering their products, perhaps even less consistent. Given that the 16 series of the GeForce lineup was actually released a year after the 20 series. So confusion was bound to ensue. That's why in today's video, we'll be covering all you need to know about both RTX and GTX graphics cards, name, performance, and value. So without any further ado, let's begin. Let's start from the ground up and work our way towards the RTX and GTX so that we can understand their similarities before moving on to their differences. All of NVIDIA's gaming-oriented GPUs belong to their GeForce GPU brand. This brand was established way back in 1999 with the original GeForce 256 GPU. Over the years, NVIDIA has released lots and lots of different GPUs, culminating in the two latest GPU lineups, the GeForce 20 series that launched in 2018 and the GeForce 16 series that launched in 2019. The GeForce 20 series is made up of only RTX graphics cards, while the GeForce 16 series is made up of only GTX graphics cards. The RTX name was brand new at this point while the GTX moniker had been used in previous generations. So what do these letters mean anyway? Are they an acronym for something? Nope, they don't mean anything. They're literally just there for branding because they sound cool and kind of catchy. That's literally all there is to it. Just like the i3 in Intel Core i3 doesn't mean anything either. It just sounds better than one. <laughs> NVIDIA has been using similar two- or three-letter designations for a while now to convey the sense of quality, as in what kind of performance you can expect from which GPU. For example, they've used the GT, GTS, and GTX designations, just to name a few, but only the GTX and the RTX have survived to present day. And that's really all there is to it. NVIDIA wanted to convey the sense of a huge generational gap in their new line of graphics cards, and to do so, they introduced a new RTX moniker. But then, why go back to GTX the year after? And why was the GeForce 16 series released after the 20 series? First things first, we need to talk about architecture. Both the 20 series RTX GPUs and the 16 series GTX GPUs utilize the same new Turing GPU microarchitecture. The RTX graphics cards released in 2018 were the first ever graphics cards to feature the new architecture, and naturally the 16 series GPUs that came out a year after also featured it. Before Turing, gaming-oriented NVIDIA GPUs used the Pascal microarchitecture for a very long time, so they wanted to heavily highlight this new architecture and its capabilities, which is why they decided to release the more powerful GPUs first. Thus, the 20 series lineup was made up entirely of upper, mid-range, and high-end GPUs. These were the graphics cards that could properly highlight the capabilities of the advanced features that the new Turing-based GPUs brought to the table. And to really drive home the idea that this was supposedly a monumental step forward for gaming, they slapped on a new brand name, the RTX. But they had to release the lower mid-range and budget entries sooner or later. After all, not everyone can afford to buy graphics cards that cost $400 or more. And here's the thing, even though these lower-end GPUs were still based on the same architecture, they simply didn't have the advanced features that NVIDIA had been shoving in everyone's face through marketing. So in an effort to make it easier for consumers to distinguish between the GPUs with advanced features and the GPUs without them, they kept the GTX name and called them the 16 series just for good measure. That's why, even though both the 16 series GTX and the 20 series RTX belong to the same generation of GPUs, they have these different designations. NVIDIA wanted to highlight that the RTX GPUs were not merely more powerful than the GTX GPUs, but that they also had awesome new features that the GTX GPUs didn't. We think that this raised just as many questions as it answered, but it is what it is. So what are these advanced new features? Well, it's normal for more powerful GPUs to have more cores than their less powerful cousins. The RTX GPUs, however, not only have more cores, but some of them are the two special kinds of new cores. These are the RT cores and the Tensor cores. 
if you take these special cores out of the equation, there really isn't that much of a difference between the 20 series and the 16 series. Sure, the 20 series GPUs are still more powerful just because they have more transistors, more regular cores, better memory, and so on, but the difference here is akin to the difference between the low and high-end last-gen 10 series GPUs. Just pure raw power. So what makes these new cores so special? Let's start with the RT cores. These are the cores responsible for bringing to life the most aggressively marketed capability of the RTX GPUs, real-time ray tracing. What ray tracing does is trace the paths of virtual rays of light with the goal of realistically simulating the way light interacts with the environment. Ray tracing in and of itself isn't a new technology. It's been used in animations for a long time now, but this was the first time that a GPU could handle it in real time. In games, the use of real time ray tracing allows for much more realistic lighting and reflections. But here's the thing, we cannot overstate how taxing it is on a hardware to calculate the trajectory of each individual ray of light and how it interacts with the environment. This is where the special RT cores come into play. Ray tracing is technically possible on all GPUs without RT cores, in so much as you can enable it in a graphics menu, but the performance will be nothing short of awful. Even a last-gen flagship like the GTX 1080 Ti can't handle it in a manner that leaves the game even remotely playable. And even GPUs with RT cores take a big performance hit when real-time ray tracing is enabled. This begs the question, is ray tracing even worth it? First of all, as of April 2020, there are only 20 or so games out there that support real-time ray tracing. It's certainly a more respectable number than it was back when the RTX GPUs just came out and people had to pay a hefty premium for a feature that no game supported yet. And this number is bound to grow with both the upcoming PS5 and Xbox Series X consoles set to feature real-time ray tracing support. But even then, we highly suggest watching some comparison videos to see for yourself what games look like with real-time ray tracing enabled and disabled. The difference is undeniably there, and once you spot it, you'll definitely appreciate it. But since it's all about shadows and lighting, it's easy not to notice the difference at first glance. Once you do notice them, you'll be wowed without a doubt, but whether or not they make up for the performance hit is up to you. For example, the game Control runs at a stable 60fps on an RTX 2070 and an i7-9700K setup but only manages to scrape by on 30 FPS once real-time ray tracing is turned on. The frame rate drop isn't this drastic in every game, but it is always noticeable. So our stance on real-time ray tracing is this. It is most definitely not a gimmick. It's an important technological advancement that will greatly enhance our gaming experience in the years to come. But at the moment, the hardware simply isn't powerful enough to handle it and the developers still aren't making full use of it. Nvidia was understandably very eager to push this feature to the forefront of the marketing campaign for the RTX GPUs, but we shouldn't forget that this is the first generation of GPUs to have this feature. Each new generation will handle it better and in a couple of years this feature will be immensely impactful. But at the moment, this is a feature that many gamers will happily turn off, which greatly reduces the cost effectiveness of the RTX graphics cards. We're guessing most of you knew about real-time ray tracing, even if you didn't know anything about RT cores. But the same does not go for Tensor cores. That's just because Nvidia doesn't market them as aggressively. Tensor cores are cores used specifically to enhance the capabilities of deep learning. These cores were first used in Nvidia Volta GPUs, but since these aren't gaming GPUs, most people have never heard of them. Deep learning has many applications, but for us gamers, it's important because it's used for a brand new anti-aliasing method, deep learning super sampling, or DLSS for short. DLSS works by using deep learning models to generate detail and upscale the images to a higher resolution, which makes the image sharper and reduces aliasing. These deep learning models are constructed on Nvidia's supercomputer and then executed to your GPU's tensor cores. If you don't know what aliasing is, check out the link in the description that'll take you to a video all about this. But overall, DLSS makes for a crisper image, and it's less taxing on the hardware than other anti-aliasing methods. 
More importantly, it's also been shown to significantly improve performance when ray tracing is turned on, which is a big deal, as you can imagine. We're not sure how and why this is, but somehow DLSS simply brings out the best in ray tracing and we think that's wonderful. Sadly, the number of games that support DLSS is small. More games support real-time ray tracing than DLSS, so you figure out the math. And that about does it for today's video. In conclusion, the 20 series RTX and the 16 series GTX split we got with the current gen GPUs is confusing. But there is at least a reason behind it, which doesn't always happen in the tech industry. Even though all of these GPUs are based on the new Turing microarchitecture, the RTX GPUs have advanced RT and tensor cores that the GTX GPUs are simply lacking. Our guess is that the folk at NVIDIA thought potential buyers may believe that the new GTX graphics cards, like the GTX 1650, would support the aggressively marketed real-time ray tracing if they called it the RTX 2050. All in all, ray tracing is a cool feature, but given how new and unrefined it still is, it's not really worth it for most gamers. From a performance to dollar standpoint, RTX graphics cards are only worth it if you don't plan on enabling ray tracing. And even then, you're sadly paying a premium for this feature that you won't be using. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. You can let us know if you have by liking it, sharing it with your friends, and leaving a comment. We're especially eager to hear from people who already use the RTX graphics cards and are still watching this video for some reason. What has the experience been like for you? Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to our channel and enable notifications by clicking on the bell icon. We upload a new video every week, so keep your eyes peeled for the next one. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.